Hi, bookworms. Welcome to The Best Book Ever, the podcast where we talk about your favorite books. I'm your host, Julie Strauss, and my guest today is Farheen Raza Abbas. Farheen is the host of The Musings of a Modern Muslim podcast and Real Talk with Farheen on Radio Caravan. She has earned the reputation as a compassionate communicator who isn't afraid to take on the topics that everyone is thinking about but not addressing. She has a fearless and energetic approach to tough topics and cultural stigmas. And through her talk show and podcast platform, Farheen raises awareness on issues important to women, families, and living your best life. Bookworms, I loved my chat with Farheen. She's my first guest to choose a book from her childhood, and it was fascinating to explore how the topics of a book written in 1958 and set in colonial Connecticut are still relevant today. It may be a children's book, but it covers women's rights, religious persecution, and slavery. I'm so happy that Farheen is here with me today to tell me why The Witch of Blackbird Pond by Elizabeth George Spear is the best book ever. For more information on how to support this podcast, check out my Patreon. For about the cost of a latte, you can have access to exclusive interview clips that are only available to my patrons, advance access to the books we discuss, and more. Go to patreon.com, that's p-a-t-r-e-o-n.com slash best book ever to learn more about how you can help me keep the candles burning over here in my reading cave. Now back to the show. Hi, Farheen. Welcome to the Best Book Ever podcast. Thank you for having me. This is exciting. (laughs) I'm so grateful you're here today. I'm so excited to talk to you about this book, but let's get started first of all with, tell me about your reading life. I wish I had more of reading life. I really do. I, I love books. Um, one of my best jobs in my life was uh, when I was in um, first year of college and I worked at Borders Bookstores, if anyone remembers those oh, anymore. Of you remember course. Borders Bookstores? That was like my dream job in high school. And I, when I finally got the job, I was like the happiest person. I worked there for three years and that was literally my most favorite job I've ever had. Even more than kids. Like, nope, I love, <laughs> I love that job so much. <laughs> It was just because you, you you were surrounded by people who were there because they wanted to. They want to work at Borders Bookstore and everyone had different reading styles. And of course, you got to see, and, and this is, uh, you know, 100 years ago when Harry Potter was being released. So I saw all those release parties and um, all those fun things. And I just, it was the best ever. So, And I used to be able to read a lot of books. There was a time that I could actually simultaneously read four to five books and keep them separate wow. and read them and retain all the information never lose a story and but then you know life got in the way slowly kids happen life happened and now there's like a pile of books on my nightstand I was like I need to just read but I really I I think cell phones and mobile world has really changed that because you could read but then you could also sit on Facebook (laughs) yeah and the the way they have the same effect on me that reading does in that I will pick up a book and I'll just keep reading and go just one more chapter is going to be fine and then it's Mm -hmm. two in the morning and the phone does the same thing to me although it (laughs) I mind the phone time so much more and I don't mind if I've gone till two in the morning reading but (laughs) exactly and I feel like phone time that late actually hurts your eyes more you feel like more achy but when you're reading a book late you may still be up till three or four but it doesn't hurt your eyes it doesn't hurt like your sensories are fine you're just like okay I'm reading thinking reading thinking but yeah, I mean, I, I missed reading and I have a pile of books that um, I have some, I always try to keep a variety of books on my nightstand. One day I'll pick it up. So I have uh, right now the autobiography of Malcolm X sitting there. And then, so that's my heavy read. And then I have um, this other book, uh, the writer of Tuesdays with Maury, when he wrote uh, the book, The Five People You Meet in Heaven. Oh, so I saw yeah. a follow-up book the other day at Target and I was like, you know, the one more person you meet. And I was like, I had no idea he wrote this book. So it's sitting on my nightstand. And then um, then I usually try to keep something, you know, like uh, I like comic books. I like manga and anime. So then I have like a manga sitting there on the side. And I'm like, okay, this, that's my like, okay, fluff. If I, if, uh-huh. Again, these are three books sitting there that need to be read. <laughs> You're the first guest I've had who's mentioned uh, graphic novels as really yeah which really surprises me 
when I was growing up and again, around the same time as Borders Bookstore, they were still the new thing. It was, you would get them once every six or eight months, one would come out and they, and, and because I was working there, I would always take the first copy and make it mine. I got it first, you know, the, the day before releasing, cause they were, we were, the employees were allowed to kind of buy the books the night before release. So if the book release was to, on, on Tuesday, we could buy it Monday night. So Monday night, all the employees would come in to buy the latest books, uh, even like Harry Potter. I think Harry Potter and the Goblet of Fire, I was one of the first people to read it in my community at that time, because uh-huh. I was like, oh, I work here. I got it. <laughs> I get to take it home. But they make you like sign like you can't say anything. You can't post anything. Now more so posting is everything. But even then it was like, we can't post anything about the book. But yeah, graphic novels, I find them fascinating because they're different. The stories, you get to immerse yourself in a different culture because you don't, I mean, the characters don't look any different than you or me or anything, but because they have the nuances of the Japanese culture, you see, you know, them bowing and certain facial expressions. So I've always loved them. I'm a big, uh, like anime manga fan. Um, So I, I like graphic novels because they're easier to read. So it's not like something you have to really focus. You can kind of pick it up, put it down and not be lost where you are. And um, the, the stories are just fun. I, th- I think they're just amazing stories and uh, the artwork, it's beautiful. So I like looking at the artwork. And it was just because it was at that time when all of this, um, the Japanese takeover was coming to the US where anime, manga, you had Pokemon, you had Sailor Moon, you had Dragon Ball Z, all these things coming. It was just part of the wave that my mm-hmm. generation rode. <laughs> we, mm-hmm. we love that. Where's a good place to start with that? Because I've read some graphic novels that mm-hmm. actually there were there was nothing childlike about any of them. I've read some very, yes. very heavy things, um, but I've actually yeah. never read manga at all. Where's where really? should I start? What type of a genre do you like? Oh, everything but blood and guts. And- OK, OK, that makes it easier. So there's like in, in manga, the genres are a little bit different. You have this whole genre called Magical Girl which sounds very, you know, sexist now, but it just means, which are called shoju mangas, which is basically aimed at women and girls. So they're about girly things and magical things and unicorns and flying and whatnot. Then you have the shonen mangas, which are for boys, like aimed at more like action and, you know, adventure driven ones. These were things that were made years and years ago. Of course, now it's like, it's everything's fluid. You can, you, I mean, I know plenty of girls who enjoy Dragon Ball Z and, uh, all those other things and guys who like Sailor Moon and they like the girly stuff which is perfect I think it's just, it's literature so you can enjoy it but a good place to start that isn't too long because some of them can actually some of them are still going so they've been writing for like 20 years um, and many of them will have multiple volumes uh, the one I really um, really liked is this one called uh, Chobits it's C-H-O-B-I-T-S, Chobits. It's an older one. So anyone listening to it is like, what? That's like 100 years old. It's <laughs> well, when I was young, it was new. And it's by this group of women writers who are called, their names are, I, I forget their actual names, but their group name is Clamp, like a clamp. Okay. Scale A and B like Clamp. But they would write all these fantasy ones and they were really well written. So Chobits was a really interesting one and it's available in like, in like a big mega pack now. I, I still have the original like 10 volumes, but it's like uh-huh. now there's like three mega books or two mega books. But that's an interesting one because it's the idea of, and this was written almost 20 years ago, where the idea of artificial intelligence being so real that the guy who owns this robot falls in love with her. And it's uh-huh. like, well, and he knows he's like, wait a minute, this is not a real thing. It's a, it's a chobit. But it, it's, and this was so advanced then. Now we have so many movies and books and media about this kind of topic, but this was 20, 25 years ago. You know, when I asked you what book you wanted to talk about, um, mm-hmm. you didn't hesitate, and no. <laughs> <laughs> which I loved. I, I like the whole process. I like watching people kind of go back and forth and maybe this one, maybe that one. Yeah. Everyone says it's like choosing between my children. And I also, re- <laughs> I also really like it when people immediately go, oh, it's this one, which yeah. is exactly what you did. And also you are the first person who chose um, a children's book. Yeah. <laughs> so tell me about how, why was it so easy for you to choose this one? This book, I think was, uh, I read this I want to say in 
seventh grade or eighth grade. So it, I read as a you know child, and this was one of our school books. It was a required reading in um, in English lit, and the first thing that hit me with that book when I first read it was because I'm from Massachusetts and because a lot of us that grow up in the Northeast and especially Massachusetts, you know, the history about the witches and how the trials were and how they were treated. So it, it, it was more personal. And around the same time we had read another book um, along the same lines, which is the crucible, which is like the mm-hmm. bigger you know, Arthur Miller, like higher end stuff. But um, uh, this book, I liked it because it was simple, but it was also, it was the first time that I read a book taking place in that time period where the girl was a little, you know, open and she's a little bit more free thinking and swimming and grew up in the tropical islands of Barbados. And, but living in a place like, you know, Puritan times of Massachusetts, where it was not a good time because it was this overbearing uh, level of religion being stuffed down and a lot of and the witch trials so it was just interesting because that book i still sometimes read it but i still have it i have like a beaten up copy why don't you give our listeners a brief summary of the plot of this book i i feel like it's something that everybody reads in school but maybe not it, they might actually they might they might still be reading in school but i think um the, the basically it's about this girl her name um is kit Catherine is her real name. Kit is her, uh, you know, nickname. She um, born and raised in Barbados, um, but then her family passes away. So then she gets shipped off to the nearest relative. And this is in the 1600s. So you're talking, you know, Puritans. You're t- talking uh, a new country. This this world is still being, you know, established. The U.S. is still being established at that time. And then you have this uh, girl who's like, and she described the book describes she's like a tropical bird among sparrows because she comes uh, with these very open ideas like she knows how to swim which um in those days if you look even historically swimming was something that witches could do so if you knew how to swim it was a bad thing it was not a good thing if you sank you were a god-fearing person if you swam you were your evil and satan whispers to you so she comes to this uh 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 to massachusetts and then she is taken in by her family and her family includes um uh, her uncle, her aunt, and their daughter, who is, of course, they're being raised in that environment. And then she brings her ideals to their family, which are not acceptable because it's just not the way of the society that they're living in. And then they have a neighbor who the, the, her cousin likes, and then the guy starts liking her because she is different and she's out there. And then they always warn her of this old woman out in the fields and they're like, stay away from her. She's probably a witch. And she basically, because she can swim and she has all these open ideas, she builds a school to try to teach people. And it's like, what is she doing besides learning the Bible, which was the only book you're allowed to read at that time. Besides learning the Bible, she's like, there's other books out there you should learn to read and write. And they say, you know, this, this girl's a witch. So they put her on trial for witchcraft. And, uh, and, and, and before that, she's also friend, she becomes friends with this woman out in the field. And we learn that the, the woman is just a Quaker which Quakers are historically people who are very accepting and very open and they just don't like to bother anybody. And um, if you look historically in many uh, situations, Quakers have always been very good allies to a lot of people. So because she was, you know, very, a very non-judgmental woman, they just said, okay, you know, she lives in the field. She probably killed her husband and she, (laughs) you know, lives like that. But uh, so Kit becomes friends with the woman and then they put her on trial She never conformed. She did not. She's like, no, I can't. I mean, I'm not doing anything wrong. And it is nothing wrong. But just because of the society, it was thought to be wrong. Is this what appeals to you so much about her? Is her non-conforming? I think so. I think because she kind of uh, stands her ground. But she's not rude. She's not mean. But she does stand her ground. She's like, well, reading is not wrong. Um, swimming is not wrong. It should not mean that that means uh, that you're a witch and having free thought or wanting to dress up because in Puritan societies, you don't dress up. You dress very, very plain, very colorless. So in, in one of the scenes in the book, when she goes to church the first time and she wears like, I think a green or a blue dress and people are like, oh goodness, what is wrong with her? And she's like, this is not even a fancy dress. It's just a regular dress. But you can tell she she starts semi-conforming but then she's like no this is not me so I'm gonna forget go back Mm -hmm. 
I, as I, I haven't read this in many years. And as I was reading it, I was thinking how it is so particularly about the start of American Christianity and how mm -hmm. like how the judgmentalism of this early sects of Christianity mm -hmm. and yeah. And then she had a different take on it as well, because for as open as she was coming from Barbados and she went, yeah, we had slaves there. And and her family was her family in America was appalled. Yeah, um, because they went, no, 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 we're we're against that. And she, and so within the family, even they had these conflicts yeah. about it. And so I was thinking this is this is really a book about the beginning of fighting in Christianity. And I thought it was so fascinating that you chose it as a Muslim woman, that it yeah. really still appeals to you. And it spoke to you so much. Yeah, yeah, it does. And I do remember that part when, because um, again, in the Northeast, it was like, oh, slavery is bad. It was just like, mm -hmm. there's no question it was bad. So it was like, well, but a lot of historical figures did have slaves. I mean, uh, just recently, me and the family, we watched Hamilton on um, Disney Plus, and we loved it. But then telling the kids that, you know, uh, well, George Washington and all these people had slaves and they were like, what? Mm -hmm. Really? So it's, 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 I think it's not being okay with it. That's not, not the right word, but it's, it's just kind of, you know, compartmentalizing that. Yes. At that time, things were, that were normal are bad. They were mm -hmm. not good things to be normalizing. And of course, with the civil rights movement that came into forefront, but again, if you look back on it in history, George Washington, the founder of the nation, who's on our dollar bill, was everywhere, had slaves. But do you just say, okay, you know, we should hate them all and remove them from everything? I mean, those are, those are arguments that go on. But again, you can't not teach the history because yeah. that is also part of it. Yeah, it, it was fascinating to read in this year as we're going through this you know, modern civil rights movement and, and modern reckoning of how we treat mm -hmm. uh, Black Americans and how we treat women. And I was looking at this book thinking, gosh, we have really been, we have not reckoned with this ever. No, no. And hopefully now we are. And, and, but it, it's part of our story and we yeah. really do need to see the full picture. And I like that she, that Kit is, is, had that aspect. She wasn't a perfect character at all. She was very no. flawed and she saw her family as flawed. Yeah. Because they had such backwards notions about what women should wear. And they went, yeah, hi, you had slaves. <laughs> you mentioned that we're still not, we haven't reckoned with it. And we were watching the movie Selma the other day and we're like, mm -hmm. it's the same thing. It's mm -hmm. still the same. <laughs> Nothing has changed. So like, and that was 1964 and we're what, 2020? Still the same. So uh, yeah, but, but I think also um, she, Kit symbolized like the modern woman in 1640s, whatever. And it's like, mm -hmm. well, in that time, just even this little bit of a modern thought was a big thing. Mm -hmm. So she was this forward thinker and would probably end up you know, going back to Barbados and having like this amazing life because she could, she wanted it so much. Yeah. yeah. What, Farheen, tell me about your, your podcast, because I think this conversation that we're having about reckoning with who we are as a culture mm -hmm. right now, that's very much what you dive into, into your podcast, right? Yeah. Yeah. My podcast is called Musings of a Modern Muslim. And I like to think of myself as a modern thought Muslim, because I was thinking about titling, you know, modern, modern thinking Muslim, but I was like becoming too word heavy. And I was like, okay, I'll just leave it as this. And when um, I came up with the idea, I was like, well, there's a lot of misconceptions out there. They're, they're, they're still there and they're still perpetuated and they're probably going to be there for a long time, maybe even until my kids and grandkids are around. But I was like, you know, if I can take a moment just to kind of take some of those misconceptions head on and talk about them, um, and kind of demystify them. Like that was my big word was like demystifying Muslims. Like we're not, mm -hmm. we're not that different. Some of us, are, every family has the bad eggs. We all have our bad eggs, but <laughs> overall we're pretty much the same. So it's like, we just have different sounding names and a different way of prayer and dressing, but overall we're pretty much the same. So that's when I got the idea and I was like, well, I don't only, at first I thought it was going to be just me talking 
most and in my initial episodes is just me but then i was like you know what i can reach out to other people and talk to not just uh so far i've only had other muslims on the show but i am not averse to the idea of talking to um a non-muslim or anyone else about anything because i was like well we we can discuss and we can say well in our religion it says this but in yours it says that Mm -hmm. but is we should be okay with it at the end so that's why this came about (laughs) do you tackle a specific topic each time or do you just kind of go with whatever comes up in the conversation or do you say today i want to address this particular misconception sometimes i do that sometimes i will um say like okay you know there's a big misconception about women's rights in islam so Mm -hmm. that was something head-on i took on and then of course with black lives matter i was like well there are you know black lives matter does highlight of course the black community and how they're treated but even within our religion where and all religions truly believe in equality but people don't so mm-hmm. even in our religion we have where black muslims are treated less than other muslims so then i i found someone who was a black muslim woman and i was like let's talk about this so that was something to take head on and then that that idea kind of went to the last episode where it was about colorism where mm-hmm. in our um a lot of the families who are from the southeast asian countries there's this big idea that lighter skinned within the same race is better and anyone darker skinned is worse so that whole colorism topic came about and then uh i've actually launched an episode today where it is about um friendships failing because i think that's a relationship we don't talk about as much people talk about you know there's partners they're talking about their kids their um loved ones or their co-workers there's all these quizzes and everything oh are you a good friend but it's like well we don't talk about friends and friendships and especially when friendships break in adulthood and so i was like well that's just something that's why the word musings of it was like to keep it kind of open it's not a religious podcast and that's why um i just had my uh, graphic designer add a little subtitle it's like it's a podcast for everyone it's meant to be something very fluid very open just i'm just happen to be a muslim thinking about something but it's not it's not meant to be a religious thing so when you do an episode such as French, friendships failing you are not necessarily saying um this is what happens in the muslim world when a friendship fails you're just yeah. taking on this topic in general and you are putting your voice out there as a modern muslim woman yeah. i also want to talk about what it means to be a friend Yeah, 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 exactly. Um so in this last episode I had um a family therapist join me and we talked about like why do when people especially now with social media people unfriend and then that's that's like the cut direct like the old English cut direct is like unfriending people. Mm-hmm. So I was like well doesn't and and everyone believes in the idea of hope but doesn't this whole topic of unfriending kind of lose hope because like well I don't want to see you <laughs> ever in my life. So uh, we were talking about that and that's where where that episode came about. And yeah, it's it's not meant to be like an Islamic podcast at all. <laughs> Sometimes it is, but not but not always. I can't wait to listen to that episode because it is so relevant to right now, particularly in our political climate where yeah, people are so angry and I have done mm-hmm. this myself where I cannot be friends with you if you believe in this particular politician. Yeah. and it's so easy to just cut people off it is um and and a lot of times that cutting off is is that simple as you said just hit the unfriend button yeah but i i truly think that unfriending it, it just closes the door mm-hmm. there are people on my friends list who i um maybe was friends with but now we're just kind of drifted apart but i w- i don't unfriend them i st- maybe i might not see as many of their posts but they're still kind of there in the periphery like okay mm-hmm. because i really believe that you never know when you might need someone mm-hmm. for whatever reason for even something as minuscule as oh you know you make awesome cakes can i pay you to make a cake or something <laughs> something as basic as that or something bigger let's say that they're married to a cardiologist and you need, you need a heart doctor it's like well can can i see your husband or some whatever so i really believe in the idea that just leaving it open and w- with the idea with the with political differences that is a, a topic i want to handle but it's like i need to I want to probably do that after election <laughs> not not no <laughs> no cuz I'll probably get very riled up on myself so um but but yeah like in this episode I did cover more just friends like friends mm-hmm. breaking apart for whatever reason mm-hmm. be it something that happens or just drifting apart and it's very interesting how in the episode we figure out that kids are actually better than adults in this <laughs> with friends yeah 
kids are better. We're not. <laughs> yeah, they really are. They they don't hold on to the hurts no, quite as no. long as we do. We, and we're grudge holders, very bad, very mm-hmm. badly grudge holders. Yeah. yeah. I can't wait to listen to it. And uh, you publish every two weeks? I publish podcast? every two weeks. I, I try to keep the schedule um, Thursdays. So my, my, like my mind works on a Thursday. I'm like, two weeks Thursday is a good day to launch an episode. Do you also work outside the house? I don't. I actually, oh. well, uh, kind of, kind of. I, I have a radio show here in Dallas. So I do have a radio show that I do once a week. So that's on Mondays. Um, because of the pandemic and the way studios are and close quarters, we've been doing um, recorded shows instead. So it's been like, it's, it's been easier actually because just sit, sit here and just record something and send it in. Oh, or we can even, uh, if they have a tech on site that day, then you can call in and be on the phone and be in the radio. So I do that. And then um, I do um, a lot of, uh, I'm on the board and chairs of a lot of committees for organizations here. Like one is about, for, one is for battered women. So I'm on the chair of that and then uh, a board of a few other committees. So I, I try to keep busy in like, and then I have three boys. So it's like, yeah, that's, that's just, that's just my busy right there. <laughs> that's a lot of things. Yeah. <laughs> my husband says the same thing. He's like, too much for him, too much. That's why I can't commit to a weekly podcast. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I cannot. <laughs> What's your radio show about? That's kind of, um, that's more about general social issues. And it's, it's not a long show. It's only half an hour. So half an hour on radio is actually 20 minutes because if you remove ads and little breaks and like little announcements you have to make throughout, it's about 20 minutes just talking about something, anything, just, you know, being a good person, being nice. What are good ways to be better at time management? Something easy, mm-hmm. nothing, nothing too in depth. <laughs> but yeah, that's where the podcast idea came from. I was like, okay, you know, maybe try this instead. And this avenue is actually more open about things because you can really talk about anything on podcasts. So tell me, you told me the three books on your bedside. Um, are mm-hmm. you in the middle of any of them or is there something that you're reading right now? Yep. The, the one I did start finally was uh, The Next Person You Meet in Heaven. Mm. I, love, I love his books. I think they're really just nice good books and even the movies made of some of those books have been pretty okay like usually movies are not as good but i think they made tuesday with maury and then they also made um the five people you meet in heaven oh. so they were made into movies um years I didn't ago know that. yeah years ago years ago like 15 16 years ago but this book i hadn't i didn't know that was out like it just kind of missed my radar completely mm-hmm. and i kind of that's where I miss bookstores. I mean, there are still Barnes and Noble are around and everything, but you don't really go to a bookstore. <laughs> Just sit there. I can't well, go there anyways because my kids will destroy the bookstore. So it's like, well... Just browsing, sometimes just coming across. Or uh, that's, that's one thing I miss when I used to work at Borders was you got like this sheet that these are upcoming books. And you kind of knew like, oh, this author's coming out with this. This one's coming out. Do you know, I, I'm a big Dan Brown fan and I worked at Borders when... Um, the Da Vinci Code came out. So I remember the launch event for that as well. So when his last book came out, um, Origin, I started the book three times and I forgot it every single time because <laughs> it was just something kept happening. And then I, I was on a flight and I was like, okay, I have good, and this plane I knew had no, had no TVs. So I was like, okay, you know what? I'm going to read this book. And I actually finished it. And I was like, huh. <laughs> Was it but good? I, but it, was, it was good, but I was, I was, it was, I felt bad in myself because I'm, I'm such a fan of his books that I would get the hardcover and read the hardcover. I actually read the paperback and I was like, <laughs> the mass market paperback. I was not happy with myself. I was like, this is not fan. <laughs> this is not fan level reading because mass market paperback is like, in my mind, like you really just, you really just <laughs> waited till the very last minute <laughs> to get this because they don't come out that fast. They come out like a year later. Right. So I was like, Oh dear. I was like, I'm, I'm not a fan anymore. I guess I, guess I can't. <laughs> there was another book uh, by this author, um, like a retelling. Uh, it's called Juliet. It was a retelling of Romeo and Juliet. By like Dan Brown? Historic... No, no, no. Oh, oh, a totally different author. Yeah. I just went off on a tangent. <laughs> I was like, no, was a I want to hear about that. That sounds fascinating. It was about the historical aspect of Romeo and Juliet. Like, not like thinking that okay Shakespeare didn't just come up with this he actually took this from a historical event oh yeah it's called Juliet a novel and it's by by Anne Fortier okay I've never heard of that yeah and then she wrote a second book about Amazons 
Yeah. Ooh. All right. I'm going to look that up. That sounds great. Yeah. Well, why don't you tell our listeners where they can find you in all of the places? Sure. Um, <clears throat> easiest to find me is on, um, well, me. If you want to find me, me, you'll find me on uh, Instagram at the mod Muslim. So it's just one word, the mod Muslim. Easy enough to find, hopefully. And then um, that's also my Gmail. So the mod Muslim at gmail.com. And then also I am on uh, no other social media besides my own personal Facebook. But then the podcast is everywhere. Slowly and steadily have gotten it everywhere. So it's on iTunes. It's on um, uh, Google, Spotify, Stitcher, iHeart, all those ran- and then all these little random places that mm-hmm. it exists too. And it's called Musings of a Modern Muslim. But if you simply just put in Modern Muslim, you'll see my little cartoon logo. And it's probably the first one that comes up. So and is something. your radio show available widely or is that just a local? Yeah, it actually is. Um, if you tune in on Mondays uh, at 1 p.m. Central Time, um, there is uh, an app that our station does have. It's called Radio Caravan, like caravan of people going somewhere. Um, and you can listen to that live. So that Fantastic. is there as well. Yeah. And we will link all of these in our show notes as well so that people can find you easily. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you so much. Farheen, this has been a delight. I want to thank you for reintroducing me to this book because I read it as a child and I and then I read it along with my kids when they were very mm-hmm. young, but it's been a long time and it was really fun to read again and remember how great it was. And it was also just fascinating to read in this day and age that we live in. Yeah. So I want to thank you for bringing it back into my life. Oh, you're welcome. Thanks for listening, book nerds. For more information on this episode and links to all the books we discussed, please go to our website, bestbookeverpodcast.com, or follow the podcast on Instagram at bestbookever. I'm your host, Julie Strauss, and you can find me everywhere as Julie wrote a book. If you enjoyed this podcast, please share it on social media and leave a review on whatever podcatcher you use. Reviews really help our visibility to new listeners, and we are grateful for everyone. Thanks for joining me today, and I will see you at the library.